This woman embodies my practice. She is my practice. I tried to fight this at first. No, you can't be in this one also. I have to do something different, something exciting, something new. But somehow she managed to make the bristles of my brush back into her pattern, where the paint became white again. The movement of my hand imitates hers. The rhythm of knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one, setting a beat that my brush bounces on the canvas to, as shiny threads of oil paint unravel into wool. The way she shuffles through space in holy slippers builds the architecture of figures and objects that seem to always revolve around her, without any force of intention. It just happens. She drapes watered down washes of oil paint over shoulders of the stakes, a sheer paisley shawl that sweeps onto each canvas and protects the women that perform. The fragile frame of her glasses asks of my most dedicated precision, switching the delicacy of my brush and lifting the heaviness of my hand to rest as daintily as the frames upon her nose. My studio has become a costume of her, tubes of cerulean blue and cadmium red scattered like the zigzags of her skirt upon a desk smeared with her fingerprints. Yet, her influence upon my creativity is so much more than the material of her aesthetic. She has a strength of existence in the interiors she creates and lives in. Her hobbies, her emotions, her possessions, her movement, her body being the constructor of space. It doesn't swallow her, but she feels it. She is it. What she makes with her hands goes on to adorn the house forms the most precious, valuable things that become unimaginable to live without. Through the brush, my hands interact with these objects like a ritual day to day, such as a ball of wool she unravels and drops to roll between and into each painting. But what about outside? The exterior, the dark, who is mother when she exists out of home? The day lights her familiarity and caters to her domesticity, but at night this light changes. Its glow is artificial, focused, strategic in its scattering along the dark roads she walks. It's man-made. Under such spotlights, that costume that clothed my studio now clothes her as she performs her monologue of existence, basking in the light that is safety, that is visibility. That wall weaves a new purpose, wraps around the base of the lamp like a chain, latching and locking itself to this portal of protection. Like how the line of string chose the paths for great explorers, this line of lamps takes on that same purpose, choosing the route home for a woman walking alone. So do women obey this light then? Is our movement manipulated by its scattering? Are we only visible when under it, indulged by it, drenched in it. Should we thank it or fight it? The Matrix have shown us our want to contain and control female movement. The meandering paths of 1980s housing estates a demonstration of this activity. Yet how do these paths exist today, at night? Is their decoration with lights a disguise of the female independence they fight? Through paint I observe mother's movement between day and night, inside, outside, by painting a performance of Fermusery to the paradox and contradictions these lamps light up. These paradoxes and contradictions encapsulate what we all face in this city. Do we want to blend in or stand out? Do we crave anonymity or fear loneliness? My studio notices her existence, yet only builds the frame for mother to stretch, knit, prune, sew, step into a stage for women whose performance my brush conducts. Okay, I'll see you, tweet to you soon, yeah. Bye, bye, bye.